welcome to renju at physics today we are going to discuss about the new topics a new chapter the chapter name is charges and field okay that is also known as electrostatics we are discussing about electrostatics okay so the chapter name is charges and field in ncert syllabus for uh, plus 2 classes okay so first we are going to discuss what is a charge what is charge so when we rub two material one is glass and one is silk okay when we rub these two material and bring the glass near some paper bit or paper small pieces of paper we can see that the paper will attract or glass rod will attract the paper bit otherwise uh, when we use comb while well, combing hair then we bring it near a small paper bit that also attract the comb is also attract the small paper bit so from this we can conclude that when rubbing suppose in the case of first case we rub the glass road with silk and bring the glass road near paper bit we can see that the glass road attract the paper bit okay so from this experiment from this we can say that when we rub two material the body get both the body get electrified or a charge is developed due to the rubbing of two material okay so due to rubbing or due to friction when we rub there is a friction which develop so due to that some charge is developed in the material so that charge is due to friction charge is due to the friction between two material and charge is produced or induced in the two material okay so that electricity is called uh, that charge never move from one end to the other end is re remaining rest at that position of rubbing so that type of electricity is called uh, static electricity okay so the i told example when we rub a glass rod with a silk okay and bring the glass rod near a paper bit we can see that the glass rod will attract the paper bit so we conclude that when rubbing the two material right here we rub the glass and silk the both get electrified okay so due to rubbing the body get electrified or charge is produced in that body okay due to the friction okay so electricity developed due to friction or rubbing is called frictional or static electricity due to rubbing to material a charge is induced or electricity is developed due to friction there is called frictional electricity or is also called static electricity so what is electric charge electric charge is an intrinsic property of elementary particle of matter which give rise to electric force between various objects so electric charge is a intrinsic property of elementary particle of matter which gives the electric force between various objects so that is an electric charge okay so electric charge is an intrinsic property of elementary particle of matter which give rise to electric force between the various object that is called electric charges so the unit of electric charge is coulomb coulomb is the unit of electric charges now we are going to discuss about two type of charges okay two type of charges for understanding two type of charge there are two type of charges we run an experiment and a scientist's name is uh, dufay the name is dufay f a y run an experiment okay he give there are two type of charges 
So by the this was the experiment. He took a charged glass rod and he suspended with the help of a silk thread. And he bring a charged glass rod near that is found that the charged suspended glass rod will be repelled. Okay. And again he repeat another experiment. He charge an emberite rod. He charge a bonnet rod with the help of a fur and is suspended with the using a silk rod, a silk thread, and bring a charge glass. Okay, near to the ebonite found that the ebonite rod is attracting the glass rod. From this experiment, the Duvet says that there are two types of charges. The base says that there are two types of charges. The property that differentiate the two types of charges it is, is polarity. The polarity differentiate the two types of charges. So the face says that there are two kinds of charges. So another scientist's name is Benjamin Franklin. He says that there are two types of charges it is give the polarity. One charge is positive, one charge is negative. There are two types of charges. One is positive polarity and another one is negative polarity. The polarity is given by the scientist Benjamin Franklin. Then now we can discuss how due to rubbing how the body get positive and the body get negative charges. That we are going to discuss. Here I have a glass load. This is a glass rod. It's rubbed with a silk. Rub with silk. This is a glass rod. It's rubbed with silk. During rubbing, the electron from glass is moved to silk. Electron from glass is moved to silk. So here electron is lost and here for silk electron is getting. So electron get negative charge and glass rod get a positive charge. So due to rubbing with substance lost electron that become positive charge and which substance gain electron that get positive negatively charge which get electron which gain electron that get negative charge which material lost electron that get a positive charge. In the case of ebonite, so we consider this is an ebonite rod. Ebonite rod is uh, uh, rubbed with fur. Okay, this is an ebonite rod. During rubbing, the electron is moved from fur to ebonite. Electron is moving from Fur to ebonite, so ebonite rod get negatively charged and fur get positively charged. Okay, due to rubbing, the material get charged. Those who lose electron that become positive, those who gain electron that become negative. In this way, the positive and negative charge is gained by the material. So there are two types of charges, one is positive and negative. It is explained by the scientist Dubé and the polarity is given by the Benjamin Franklin and he says that there are positive charges and negative charges. Now we are going to discuss about how we can charge a substance. How we can charge a substance with the presence of a charged body. So one of the method of charging a substance, an uncharged body is the charge by induction process. Charge by induction process. So charge by induction process means we are, can charge an uncharged body in the presence of a charged body. Not in actual contact. There is no actual contact. So we are bringing an uncharged, a charged body near an uncharged body the uncharged body get charged. That process is called charge by induction process. So we can discuss how we can charge an uncharged body 
by induction method. So we have two substance, two object. This is one metal sphere and this is another metal sphere. Both the metal sphere are in contact. A and B are in contact. We are bringing a positively charged glass rod. We are bringing a positively charged glass rod near these two objects. Here A and B are two metal sphere that is in contact. We are bringing a positively charged glass rod near this. Here this is a positive charge. is contain a positive and negative charge. It is actually neutral. So all the negative charge present in the is reaches this and all the positive charge will be repelled to this region okay so we are we consider two sphere one is a and b initially this is a sphere we are we didn't give any charge okay this is our sphere a and b then we bring a glass positively charged glass rod near a and b we can see is that this is a figure one so next figure we can see is that a and B to the presence of this uh, positively charge we can see that here negative charge will become and here a positive charge will be induces this separation will continue till both positive and negative charge are equal this is the second figure so what is next what we are going to do mean we are separating A and B we are separating A and B here A and B are separated and here the glass rod is here and here it becomes negatively charged and here is also positively charged A and B okay is separated positive and negative charge here negative charge is here and here it will be positive charge then what is next we are we are going to do means we are removing we are removing this positive charge. We are removing this glass rod. Then we can see this is the third figure and fourth figure. We can see this A and this is B. A and B here. Then when we remove this glass rod, we can see all the negative charge will be condensed and all the positive charge will be condensed. This will be attractive. Then after that. This is the fourth figure. We are separation. We are going to increase separation of A and B is increase. So we can see is that A and B separation of A and B is increase. We can see is that all the positive charge is uniformly distributed and negative charge is uniformly distributed and also a positive charge is also distributed. That means A become negative charge and B become positive charge. This process of charging is known as charging by induction. This process of charging is known as charging by induction. Here, without direct contact with the metal, the body gets charged. This process is known as electrostatic induction or this process is known as charge by induction method. Now, we are going to discuss how we can charge a body positively. Okay, due to induction method. So we consider a body, this is a body, we have to charge this body positively. So bringing a negatively charged ebonite rod. So we are bringing an ebonite rod. Ebonite rod is rubbed with the uh, fur, so the ebonite rod get a negative charge. This is ebonite. Ebonite rod. So when bring the ebonite rod near this uh, metal board, it is seen that all the positive charge is come to this end, all the negative charge will be repelled and come to the other end. Okay, first we consider a metal bowl and we bring a ebonite rod that rub with the fur, bring near the metal bowl. So we can see that all the positive charge in this come to one end, all the negative charge is come into the other edge. 
and what we are going to do means first the next step the other end of the metal bowl is earth other end of the metal bowl is earth so all the negative charge is moved to the earth the other end of the metal bowl is earth so all the negative charge is moved to the earth we know that earth is a electron bank so electron is collected in the earth during this earth but this positive charge is not earth because there will be attractive force between the positive and negative charge due to the attractive force this positive charge never moved to the earth only negative charge only moved to the earth what the next process means we are removing this earth thing you remove the earth you remove the earth and the next process is we are removing this ebonite rod we are removing this ebonite rod so the positive charge is distributed over the surface of the substance so the body get a positively charge okay so again i repeat first we consider a conductor and we bring a negatively charged ebonite rod near so we can see that all the positive charge is attracted uh, reaches to one end negative charge is in the opposite end then what is done we connect the other end that is the post negative charge is earth okay and what is the next process we remove the earth thing and also we remove the ebonite rod so we can see that all the positive charge is distributed on the surface of the sphere so in this way the body get a positive charge due to induction process okay so next we are going to discuss about the basic properties of charges basic properties of charges next we are going to discuss the basic properties of charges okay so there are three basic property of charge there are three properties the one is additive property one of the property of charge is additivity property or additive property suppose a system contain many number of charges suppose this is a system it contain q1 q2 q3 q4 etc qn charges are there then the total charge of this system can be represented by total charge q is equal to q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus etc qn this property is called as additivity property of charges so we can add all the charges in a system this is one of the property of the charges so if a system contain many number of charges like q1 q2 q3 etc qn charges then the total charge can be represented by q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus etc qn suppose for example for example so a system so we can say system contain four charges one of the charges plus 2 micro coulomb and the charge is minus 3 micro coulomb and the charge is plus 4 micro coulomb and another charge is minus 5 micro coulomb so this is stuff so what will be the total charge of the system the total charge q is equal to we can add all the charge that is plus 2 micro coulomb plus minus 3 micro coulomb plus minus 5 micro coulomb plus 4 micro coulomb so what will be the answer if the q is equal to we can take micro coulomb outside micro coulomb is 2 minus 3 minus 5 plus 6 sorry plus 4 so what will be the answer so q is equal to here 8 and here 6 so answer will be minus 2 micro coulomb so this property is known as additivity property of charges so next one of the property is the conservation of charges conservation of 
charge that is the next property of charges so conservation of charge state that conservation that is the and the property we know that what is conservation of charge charge can neither be created nor destroyed it can be transferred from one to another or in an isolated system the total charge remain constant that is called conservation of charges the total charge of an isolated system remain constant now we can consider an example in the case of a fission fission reaction of uranium 238 okay so uranium 238 92 say so a neutron come and collide with this uranium this uranium is split into two fragment one is barium and another one is krypton barium and krypton so barium the uh, 141 141 and krypton 36 and 92 and we are getting 3 neutron plus energy so here the total charge of the uranium before reaction it will be 92 the total charge is 92 and is split into two fragment one is barium and krypton the mass number this uh, 56 is charge of barium and that is is a charge of krypton the total charge after is q is equal to 56 plus 36 that is like so equal to 92 so here before and after reaction the total charge is remain that is known as the conservation of charges the so next property of charge is the condensation of charges next property is condensation of charges condensation of charges that we are going to discuss now that is condensation of charges okay condensation so what do you mean by condensation okay so condensation mean the total charge of a body the total charge of a body is always integral multiple of the integral multiple of the basic quantum of charges the basic quantum of charges the basic quantum of charges is electron so we can write the total charge q is equal to n into e here n value is 0 1 2 3 etc so condensation mean the total charge of a body is always an integral multiple of the basic quantum charges that is q is equal to ne e is the charge of electron the charge of electron e is equal to 1.6 raised to minus 19 coulomb that is the charge of an electron okay suppose a body contain suppose a body contain n1 number of electron a body contain n1 number of electron and a body contain n2 number of positive charge that is proton so the total charge q is equal to n1 into minus e plus n2 into e the proton charge is taken as positive this is negative charges the total charge will be q is equal to n1 into minus e plus n2 into e so we can write that is equal to n2 minus n1 into e so this property is known as condensation of charges the cause of condensation of charge that only the integral number of electron can be transferred from one body to another body due to rubbing that is the cause of condensation the cause of condensation is that only the integral number of electron the integral number of electron can be transferred from one body to the another body on rubbing and so generally we can say the condensation is the total charge of system is equal to plus or minus n e here n is equal to 1 2 3 is the basic unit of charges 
So these are the property of charges. The first property of charges is additivity property and second the charge is conserved and third property is the condensation of charges. So this is about the properties of charges.